जयति विबुधवंजो जानकीशो वेश जयति जगति विश्व काशिका विश्वनाथो जयति जयति हिंदू विश्वविद्यालयोयमयकम चरित महीय वाचस्पतेरतिरा सुतरा दवीय सदा सुमनता मधिवंदनीय वंद्या मदन मोहन मालवीय वंद्या मदन मोहन मालवीय Our traditions are not only an integral to our identity and existence, but also a source of our strength. We at Banaras Hindu University are also proud of our tre treasured rich traditions. The Kulgit of DHU also forms part of our celebrated legacy. At DHU, we commence all the official programs with the presentation of the Kulgit. In this order, may I now request the students of Professor Sangeeta Pandit from the Faculty of Performing Arts to kindly come on the dais and present the Kulgit. The Kulgit was written by renowned scientist Dr. Shanti Swarup Tagorji and composed by Pandit Omkar Nath Thakurji. I would also like to request the members of the audience to please not clap after the Kulgit as a mark of respect. Thank you. 
Presenting the Kulpit were the students of uh, Faculty of uh, Performing Arts. The students, participants were Rajeshree Nath, Anjali Gupta, Arpita Bhattacharya, Saurabh Kant Pandey, Sipahi Yadav, Amar Krishna Dixit. They were accompanied by Bhaskar Prasad on Tabla, Kumar Vinay on Harmonium, and Prashant Mishra on Vinay. कार्यक्रम में आगे बढ़ते हुए अब समय है हमारे बीच पधारे गणमान्य अतिथियों के स्वागत का इस क्रम में मैं आग्रह करना चाहूंगा पुस्तकालय अध्यक्ष तथा सम्मेलन के आयोजन सचिव डॉक्टर देवेंद्र कुमार सिंह से कि वे मुख्य अतिथि प्रोफेसर प्रमोद कुमार जैन का स्वागत करें मैं अनुरोध करना चाहूंगा डॉक्टर देवेंद्र कुमार सिंह से कि वे कार्यक्रम के विशिष्ट अतिथि इंक्लिबलेट के केंद्र के निदेशक प्रोफेसर जीके सिंह जुरैल का भी स्वागत करें मेरा अनुरोध है डॉक्टर डी के सिंह से कि वे सम्मेलन के मुख्य वक्ता श्री प्रशांत पांडे जी का भी स्वागत करें इंटरनेट केंद्र में वैज्ञानिक ई तथा आयोजन सचिव डॉक्टर अभिषेक कुमार से निवेदन है कि वे कार्यक्रम के अध्यक्ष तथा काशी हिंदू विश्वविद्यालय के माननीय कुलपति प्रोफेसर सुधीर कुमार जैन का स्वागत करें डॉक्टर अभिषेक कुमार से अनुरोध है कि वे प्रोफेसर दिनेश कुमार गुप्ता का भी स्वागत करें स्वागत के क्रम को आगे बढ़ाते हुए मैं काशी हिंदू विश्वविद्यालय के सैयाजी राव गायकवाड़ केंद्रीय ग्रंथालय के पुस्तकालय अध्यक्ष डॉक्टर डी के सिंह से आग्रह करना चाहूंगा कि वे मंच पर आए व स्वागत संबोधन प्रेषित करें
डॉक्टर डी के सिंह स्वागत संबोधन वार्म ग्रीटिंग टू एवरी वन प्रेजेंट हियर इट इज ए इंडीड ए ग्रेट लीजर टू हैव दिस अगस्त गैदरिंग इन दिस सब विद्यार्थी राजस्थान में इन द ऑर्गेनाइजिंग सेक्रेटरी ऑफ दिस कन्वेंशन एंड द लाइब्रेरियन ऑफ द होस्ट इंस्टीट्यूशन बनारस हिंदू यूनिवर्सिटी आई वेलकम ऑल द डेलीगेट्स invite an special guest of the caliber 2022 and world hall see thanks you all for coming we are profoundly honored to have you all with us i find it immense pleasure in welcoming our honorable chief guest professor pramod kumar jain director indian institute of technology bh varanasi he is an iit rurki alumni Highly specialized in the industrial and mechanical engineering, he is known for his work in the area of manufacturing. We are really thankful to him for taking out the time for us from his busy schedule. Welcome, sir. We have with us Professor J P Singh today, the director of Infinite Center. I welcome him, sir. We thank we thank him very much for giving us opportunity to host the most prestigious convention in the field of library and information science in our country. It has been great experience to work with Dr. Abhishek Kumar, scientist E in Signet Center, and his marvelous team of. We have learned a lot from him and his hard working team. Thank you, sir. We feel blessed at being guided and supported by a man with great vision and mission, who is known for his hard work and institution building. He is our honourable Vice Chancellor, Professor Sudhir Kumar Jain. We are glad that we now have a Vice Chancellor who recognises the important role of role the library play in academic institution. Today we are confident because he is presiding over this function. Thank you, sir. Today we have with Prasant Pandey, who is the keynote speaker of this convention. He is a director of the Library Service, Finland University, Alaska, Australia, and a specialist in the digitization of the library service. Sir, thank you for every, thank you for accepting our request and traveling all the way from Australia to enrich us with your knowledge. I also. Welcome, Professor Dinesh Gupta, our conference director. I would like to offer my regards, Professor Arvind Ares Dube, Vice Chancellor of the Central University, Gujarat, Gandhi Nagar. Professor B D Kumbar, Vice Chancellor of Devanagari University, Karnataka. Professor Hari K S Singh, ex Vice Chancellor of J P University, Jaipuriya, and Kamlesh Joshpuriya. We also have a honor to respect. to our director dean of the university many of the guests significant are also present here who are supporting us in organizing and organizing this convention they are the esteemed sponsors and media professionals we thank you all for coming here in the end i pray to baba vishnu for his blessing to make this convention successfully and for the stay of the guest in holy city varanasi once again i welcome you or thanks for coming in the caliber 2022 धन्यवाद सर ज्ञान अध्यात्म व संस्कृति का केंद्र प्राचीन नगरी काशी स्थित सर्व विद्या की राजधानी बीएच में तेरहवें कैलिबर का आयोजन विशेष महत्व रखता है The university is also known for its vast and resource-rich Sayyadi Rao Gaikwad Central Library. The majestic building of, of the library was built with a philanthropic donation by Mah Maharaja Sayyadi Rao Gaikwad of Baroda on the patent of the Library of the British Museum. 
The Central Library of PhD was nurtured and shaped by many great educators and eminent personalities, including Professor S. R. Ranganathan, who is also known as the father of library movement in India. The Central Library has the honor of organizing this prestigious three-day conference, which is witnessing large participation from institutions all across the world. We have with us on dais our eminent guest, Professor J. P. Singh Jurel, Director, Infilgrid Center of UGC. Professor Jurel has greatly contributed to higher education institutions and their management. He has been serving the cause of academic administration in different capacities with various governing and management bodies like member of council of the Indian Statistical Institute, planning and monitoring board of universities, the council and syndicates of university bodies, besides being a part of governing bodies of several autonomous institutions. He was also a member of the expert group on technology use and integration for formulation and drafting the implementation plan and framing guidelines for research internship with faculty and researchers for implementation of National Education Policy 2020. May I now please request Professor Jure to kindly introduce the convention to us, Calibre 2022. I would also like to request him to announce electronic thesis and dissertation 2023. Sir. Professor Sudhir Gain, by Chancellor Kasi Hindu University, <coughs> Professor Pramod Chen, Director IIT Varanasi, Dr. Prasant Pandey, Director Library Services from Australia, Dr. D.K. Singh, Chief Librarian and Organizing Secretary of this conference, Professor Dinesh Guptaji, my colleague, Dr. Abhishek Kumar, Savahme Upasit, Sabhi Mirasati, participants, heads, professors, the students, and especially my senior friends and colleagues, Dr. Joshi Prasad. Dr. Tumeji, Dr. Bidhi Kumar, Dr. Harike Singh, Dr. K.P. Singh, Aap Sabhi Ko, Sohanath Ki Dhati Se, Is Pavitra, Kasi, Par Mein Sabhi Ka Adhanandan, Sabhi Ka Bandha Karta Ho, Aur Pura Gudra, Jo Ki, अपना एक कल्चर, वाइब्रेंसी और हॉस्पिटलिटी के ये मशहूर है तो पूरे गुजरात की तरफ से आप सब लोगों का अभिनंदन और प्यार करता हूँ। I am extremely happy that convention on automation of libraries in education and research, which is popularly known as Caliber, is being authorized by our center. In collaboration with this university during November 17 to 19. This is our 23rd caliber and 13th in the series of international. The internal center organizes calibers at different parts of the country in collaboration with universities by inviting high quality papers or research and technical works, case studies, technology updates related to the themes of the conference. Friends, as you know, the government has announced National Education Policy 2020 with an aim to revamping of all aspects of education structure of the Indian education system with a special emphasis on the rich heritage of ancient and eternal Indian knowledge. The NEP aims to not only increase the GR in higher education from 26% to 50% by 2035, but also aims to create an umbrella body for promotion of higher education with the creation of multidisciplinary institutions in order to provide a holistic education across the disciplines. 
It also recommended creation of National Educational Technology Forum to provide a platform for free exchange of ideas on the use of technology to enhance learning, assessment, planning, administration, and integration of technology into all levels of education, wherein libraries have to play a vital role. The academic libraries which play an important role in accelerating research by providing the appropriate educational resources to the students and faculty. The roles of the library, libraries have also been changing with a new mode of online education and a variety of educational resources and allied technologies that help in the better learning and doing research. The research publication ecosystem has also been changing with various government policies with emphasis on more open and freely available data for better research with implementation of latest technology, artificial intelligence and machine learning. The LIS professionals who are champions in preservation and organization of knowledge have to re-engineer their libraries for management, organization of different digital information and accessibility of the varied content to the users and new generation learners. Friends, libraries are universally recognized as important social institution and no community is considered complete without a library system. However, libraries are facing change due to impact of ICT, changing pattern needs, changing information environment or Google that is trying to replace reference libraries. Use of disruptive technology the resulting in transition from print to, to digital, change takes place from forms to formats, delivery systems, and it is inevitable. Technology continues to evolve, evolve and as it does, it is becoming more and more integrated with society. This growing focus on accessibility of digital resources will undoubtedly impact the role of library professionals. Librarians will be challenged to learn new skills to be able to implement the new technology for learning, research and information. This could lead to an increased focus on learning and development within libraries. Innovations will also lead to advancements in digital data management that result in more accurate subject search results and citation. Friends, keeping due to all these aspects of technology, we decided to have this caliber on the theme envisioning digital transformation in libraries for next gen academic landscape with sub themes like inceptive approach of libraries for national education policy, emerging technology and trends in libraries, and open science and open library. The conference aims to deliberate on developments and innovations in library and information science. Given that the main mission of library is to offer equality of access to information for every citizen, there might not be a trend center in digital use and implement more emerging technologies. Nowadays, the words which are very popular in the use of our education institutions like big data, artificial intelligence, blockchain technology, internet of things, library, bookmarks, apps, user focus interfaces and applications, augmented reality, digital interfaces for books <laughs> are these common words which are attracting us to use these technologies in our library libraries. The caliber 2022 offers an unique opportunity to information professionals and knowledge managers to expand their audience and extend professional expertise. During this convention, we received more than 250 uh, full text papers, and out of which we have selected 52 full length papers for presentation during this conference. And these papers have been uh, published in the form of the proceedings, and some of the selected papers will be published in the Scopus Index Desktop Journal of Library and Information Science which will be uh, coming in the next issue. I know that Dr. D.K. Singh, the organizing secretary, and the team internet 
under the guidance and support of Professor Sudhir Jain, the Vice Chancellor of the PSU, have been trying its best to provide all the facilities to all our honorable participants and delegates. And I'm also sure that you will certainly enjoy the arrangements. If there is any shortcomings, then I, on behalf of my whole team, I feel uh, sorry to be here with us that we will try to uh, maximize your facility within our uh, existing resources. Finally, I urge to my all my fellow colleagues and allied professionals that we should work to make services easier to use and access. We should inspire and inform our all stakeholders. We should help the customers to learn new skills. I wish you all a very exciting, inspiring and enjoyable carnival 2022 at this campus. I am also happy to uh, be here that way back in July 1986, I started my career from this BSU. From the Institute of Medical Sciences, I was here for four and uh, four and a half months. Then I shifted to some other place. So it's a matter of pride and privilege for me to be here again as a part of the official council here. Now, I also it is our privilege to announce that we at Internal Center is going to host. The International Conference of NDLTD, known as ETD Conference, during October 2023 from 26 to 28 October. So I invite you all of you to be there, and one day session will be organized especially at the Statue of Europe, which is a, that will be highest in the world, known as the uh, the considered icon of India, not India, the icon of the whole world. So I thank you. Jai Hind, Jai Bharat. Now we have a small video for two minutes on the TV. Center are excited to host ETD 2023 at Gandhinagar, Gujarat, India in October 2023. One day session will be organized at the Statue of Unity, the tallest statue of the world. Please book your dates to travel to Gujarat, which is known for its rich culture, vibrancy, and hospitality. Thank you. I'm Professor Amesh member of the board of directors of NDLTD and also the chair of the conference committee. Pleased to share with you that ETD 2023 is going to be happen in India at the uh, Influent Center in Ahmedabad from October 25th to October 28th, 2023. Uh, you are all going to be invited uh, to attend it. The closing ceremony of the event will take place in a beautiful location at State of Unity in Gujarat. Must attend it. We are very fortunate that NDLPD builds on and collaborates with institutions all around the world, individuals, universities, national initiatives. And so it's wonderful to have one of the very largest countries in the world connected in with this worldwide initiative. India is very central to the library world and the thesis and dissertations from the students will be an enormous contribution to the global scholarship. And it's wonderful that India has become 
become involved with this and had to initiate to make the works from that country. कार्यक्रम में आगे बढ़ते हुए अब समय है मुख्य अतिथि महोदय के संबोधन का आज के कार्यक्रम के मुख्य अतिथि हैं भारतीय प्रौद्योगिकी के संस्थान बीएचई के निदेशक प्रोफेसर प्रमोद कुमार जैन मैकेनिकल तथा इंडस्ट्रियल इंजीनियरिंग के ख्याति लब्ध विद्वान प्रोफेसर जैन ने वर्तमान में आई टी रुड़की तथा पूर्व में रुड़की विश्वविद्यालय से स्नातक स्नातकोत्तर व पीएचडी की उपाधि ग्रहण की वे जुलाई दो से सितंबर दो तक भारतीय प्रौद्योगिकी संस्थान पटना के निदेशक तथा दिसंबर दो से दिसंबर 2017 तक इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन टेक्नोलॉजी डिजाइन एंड मैन्युफैक्चरिंग जबलपुर के निदेशक का कार्यभार भी संभाल चुके हैं प्रोफेसर जैन देश के विभिन्न प्रतिष्ठित संस्थानों तथा भारत सरकार की प्रमुख प्रबंधन विशेषज्ञ व सलाहकार समितियों के अध्यक्ष व सदस्य भी हैं प्रोफेसर जैन के नेतृत्व में भारतीय प्रौद्योगिकी संस्थान बी उन्नति के नए मुकाम छू रहा है मैं आमंत्रित करना चाहूंगा कार्यक्रम के मुख्य अतिथि प्रोफेसर प्रमोद कुमार जैन को कि हमें संबोधित कर अनुग्रहित करें सर प्रोफेसर सुधीर कुमार जैन वाइस चांसलर बनारस हिंदू यूनिवर्सिटी प्रोफेसर जुबे डायरेक्टर इन फ्लिपनेट प्रोफेसर पांडे नोट स्पीकर अदर डिग्नेटरीज ऑन द डायस प्रोफेसर दुबई वाइस चांसलर सेंट्रल यूनिवर्सिटी गुजरात एंड प्रोफेसर एंड रिसर्च स्कॉलर्स एंड अदर पार्टिसिपेंट्स ऑफ दिस थर्टी थर्टीन इंटरनेशनल कैलिबर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रॉम माई साइड एंड फ्रॉम द इंस्टीट्यूट साइड आई एम नॉट एन एक्सपर्ट इन लाइब्रेरी साइंस but being in administrative position you know that we have to face a lot of challenges how to maintain how to upgrade our libraries and we also know that libraries are basically the backbone of all research and academic activity in any academic or research institution and as an administrator this is our responsibility to make sure that all resources required by our faculty members and by our research scholars are supposed to be provided to them but of course we work in a constrained environment everybody knows that and one of the major constraint is the cost to maintain those libraries i have collected some data just before you know coming to this conference we iits IIT and NIT together, excluding Central University, do spend about 300 crores annually on procuring these e-resources in the form of e-books, journals, reports, and other resources. And if I talk about individual institutions, for example, say IIT BHU, we spend about 10 crores. i the kharagpur spent about 22 crores per annum on the library so there is a you know difference in the spending on e resources that we procure to uh, you can say e source sandhu or other government organization there was a scheme i, I do not know what is the status of that government started one program of one nation one subscription so that the cost of libraries can be minimized or optimized and you know that of course we are good in position let us say to support our libraries but there are many many institutions which are not in a position to bought to procure those resources for their students as a well faculty member so if something has to be done i think that is one of the area in which we can do and we should try to make sure that all the resources should be available or made available to all the researchers and the uh, faculty members of all the institutions good thing is that because of the intervention of ict in library 
Most of the resources are now in online format. Of course, there are some proprietary issues which must be resolved. That the availability of the resources has become quite simple or easy, I would say. And my fear is that in days to come or maybe in years to come, sometime libraries may disappear from the academic institutions physically. Because if all the resources are available online, they are available on my laptop, I can download any of the paper, any of the research document on my laptop or on or in on my mobile phone, then there may not be any need to have a physical space for the library. So new developments, transformation in the library, I think, are yet to be seen. This is just the beginning that we are now in a position to secure all our resources in e form. But with the event or with the applications of AI and machine learning as told by Jurel Sahib, deep learning, machine learning, facial recognition, AI, I think libraries will change completely in maybe down the line. And the library staff also, I think, have to upgrade themselves. They may not, they may require library qualifications or qualifications of a library program, but along with that, they also have to be good enough in these IAI machine learning techniques. So they should actually learn all those kind of techniques or technologies also, so that they can support students and faculty members in a printing tool spirit of the library. Along with that, we all know that with the implementation of National Education Policy 2020, government is putting, or we should say that we should now focus more on multi-dimensional, multidisciplinary research and academic programs. So those days when only one particular program, let's say I was a student of mechanical engineering, I was looking only for publications in that domain, mechanical engineering. But now it is not so, because student has to work in a multidisciplinary environment. So he, he may or she may have to refer to the papers or research reports in computer science, in material science, or anything else. So we have to maintain that kind of variety in our libraries, and side by side the volume. Volume means number of students and etc. are increasing every day in all the institutions. So we have to make sure that the variety and the volume of the research publications, etc., should always, always be maintained and uh, should be promoted in the academic institution. Side by side, there is some, some gap. I usually see that we are not able to attract our undergraduate and to some extent the postgraduate students to the library. I mean, they do come only sometimes just because air conditioned library, so they will sit there and do the, you know, their study or something. So somehow we have to outreach, we have to uh, promote the facilities of the library which are available, and we should make sure that they are the good users of those facilities in the library. And it's a good thing that now most of the books are in e format. So students who have all that kind of uh, books or library of books in their laptop or sometimes in their mobile phone also and they can read and they can refer to that material at any, at any point of time. So we have to fill this gap somehow and I think uh, uh, as we have seen in many of the places, depart, depart, there, there used to be departmental libraries earlier but now Departmental libraries are almost non-functional in many of the places because we have strengthened our central library by providing all the resources there and then through the internet connectivity, each and every faculty member can access any of the resources. So this is, uh, I think, the new, uh, you can say, new shape our library will take in days to come. And we should rely more and more on ICT technologies in days to come. Because if we have to popularize our resources, if we have to make use of our resources properly, optimally, and somehow we also have to look how can we, you know, sometimes, uh, I will not say breach the contract with the publisher, but how can we make our resources available to other neighboring institutions or uh, schools or colleges so that they can be used optimally. So these are some of the things I would like to say here, and uh, I wish that the caliber 
2020 should become a tool for mass learning. And I wish all the success to this conference. And I wish that whatever deliberations you have here during this conference this time, those deliberations you see the day of life sometime and will be implemented in some of the libraries as the cases. Thank you very much for that. Thank you very much, sir. Moving forward, may I now please request the dignitaries on the dais to kindly release the proceedings and the souvenir of Calibre 2022. Thank you very much, sir. In this order, this is time for the presidential address by the Honorable Chair of the session, Professor Sudhir Kumar Jain, Vice Chancellor of Banaras Hindu University. <laughs> Professor Jain, the 28th Vice Chancellor of Banaras Hindu University, is a globally renowned scholar of earthquake engineering. He is a recipient of Patha Shri, one of India's top most civilian awards. Prior to BHU, Professor Jain has been at the helm of affairs of IIT Gandhinagar as director for nearly 13 years. As the founding director of IIT Gandhinagar, Professor Jain is credited for shaping a newborn institution into one of India's most globalized campuses, with more than 40% of its undergraduate students and 75% of its PhD students receiving study abroad or other international opportunities. At Banaras Hindu University, Professor Jain has initiated a fresh spree of reforms aimed at providing best of the campus life to students and taking the university to the rank of world's most sought-after institutions. May I now please request Professor Sudhir Kumar Jain to deliver the presidential address, sir. Uh, Professor Sikhe Jain, my esteemed colleague at BHU IIT, Professor J.P. Singh, uh, Professor Prashant Pandey, Dr. Uh, Professor D.K. Gupta, Dr. D.K. Singh, Dr. Vishay Kumar, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Very delighted to be here for this very important conference on library and information science. As uh, you already heard from several speakers, uh, the libraries are changing. I would say that the entire society is changing. And if the society is changing, the universities are changing. And if the universities are changing, the library is changing. But it so happens that the uh, Libraries are changing much, much faster than the universities are changing or than the society. Uh, as a young student, uh, both in India and in the United States, what I saw is the library about more than 40 years back. Uh, and when I go to a good library outside India, the two are very. Uh, I have been to a library in Europe where uh, they took me for lunch inside the library. We sat inside the library and had lunch. Uh, okay. The conversations that I've had with librarians uh, internationally, uh, their entire approach is how do we become useful? How do we remain useful? How do we not become obsolete? But what the PK Jan said that uh, unless something drastic happens, uh, why would people need library? The books. You can, uh, in good old days, you needed to go to a library to find a book. When I was a student, if a professor received a book that was published in the United States, uh, he would not keep it in a row just like that. He would keep it in a lock and key. Because if he loses that book, he would not be able to find that book again easily. Or 
he does not want others to lead others. Because that is what gives him the power, the, the uh, leverage that he has that book and others do not have that. It's not too long back, about 25 years back, uh, as a professor at IIT Kanpur, I was looking for a particular uh, book and uh, I discovered that there were three people in the country who had that. And I treated with every one of them to let me borrow that. And it was practically impossible until I could break through with one of them. So the book was a matter of monopoly. Uh, whether it was a professor, whether it was an academic, whether it was a librarian, uh, there was a lot of power in holding the book. It was like telephone. Uh, when in my younger days we wanted a telephone, we needed to go to the telephone department's engineers and uh, lagao as much muska as possible to get a telephone line at our home. Today, those telephone wallas come to you and say, Hamza, that phone three go. If you now change your telephone operator from Airtel to Vodafone or Vodafone to Airtel, you will receive a lot of calls saying, why much change for Ham to seva karne ka maka. So the society is changing and the libraries are changing. And the librarians and the library professionals have to see how do we remain useful? How do we remain relevant? Because one would get respect only if one is seen as being useful. One would not get respect because one is having a status, one is having a position, one is having an air-conditioned office, one is having an air-conditioned office with a sofa also on top of that. That is not enough to earn respect. You earn respect by being useful, by being relevant. I remember interviewing a young library professional for a position at IIT Gandhi and I asked her a question. I said, this group of people that you have come across as young library uh, colleagues, where are they and how are they doing? And she started telling me, this two persons are there, one person is there. And I said, how is their job satisfaction? How are they doing? And she said in a very negative tone that unfortunately this person, she is in a very good place, but they make her do things that are not relevant to library. I said, what does it mean? She said, she has been assigned, her colleague, has been assigned work which is not directly library. And that's a very bad thing. I said, is that a bad thing or is that a good thing? Because personally, I thought that was very good. Because if a university is seeing a library staff to be useful beyond the library, if a library professional is being seen, as capable of making contributions outside life, it shows that the status, the social status of that person is much higher because that person is more useful. And I was very surprised that that, that was the mindset that that young librarian had that if I'm a librarian and if I'm in a university, don't use me for anything other than library. When you start to think like that, you isolate yourself. You become introvert, you become disconnected with the rest of the community. When you as a librarian are called upon to get associated with activities outside the library, then when you get connected with others, then when you learn from them what their requirements are, you learn from them how you could be useful, and your entire mind space gets open. So the point that I'm trying to make is that with the changing scenario, we need to think what is it that library means today and what is it that library will mean tomorrow. Uh, unfortunately, I don't see as much vibrancy and change in Indian library system as I have seen outside India. And I have been fairly interested in library work. In fact, uh, in my previous position at IIT Kandiraga, I used to tell Dr. Kumba that if I had not become a engineering professor, I would have loved to become a librarian. Uh, because uh, that is how uh, I've been very fond of books and I've been very fond of, uh, of movement of information, movement of books. The librarians have to see that they're not living in the old world. It is like in good old days, a young man 
would aspire to learn horse riding. And today, that young boy, 16 or 17, is not aspiring to learn horse riding, is aspiring to learn how to ride a motorcycle. And uh, perhaps tomorrow, something else. So we need to see how uh, the library science, uh, librarians can reorient themselves. And then connected with that is the question of educational enterprise of the library uh, science. How is it that our curriculum is going to change? Uh, to my mind, the entire curriculum of library science has to be very, very proactively uh, changing very frequently, keeping in mind the uh, nature of the uh, library uh, system that is changing. Uh, of course, as Professor Tikajan said, we have limited resources, uh, and yet we need to provide enough resources. Uh, just because Library is one area which does not cause immediate emergency. You know, if there is no water supply, uh, there will be a big problem. If the sewage system breaks down, there will be a big problem. If the electricity breaks down, there will be a big problem. But if library doesn't have books, uh, nobody would know about it. Uh, people will not uh, make so much fuss. And it is very easy to deteriorate uh, library system. Uh, without people realizing that it's like a frog in the water, the water is heated very, very slowly. The frog doesn't know uh, something is happening. Uh, same thing can happen to libraries. Our libraries can die if we are not proactive to support it. But then the librarians also have a great responsibility to see that they are not seen only as the, uh, as the stock keepers of the books, and the procurement and the supply of books is the only job. In fact, they have to see themselves as enablers, as facilitators. Somebody should be able to say that I could do this great work because I, would, I was at VHU, which happened to have a great library, or which happened to have a great library, you know, or an assistant library. I remember a long time back, uh, 22 years back, I was interested in a uh, article. I was writing an article on history of earthquake engineering in our country. And I was reading an article which was written by somebody of the fifties. Like that. And he said he wrote an article. This gentleman said I wrote an article in 1933. Now in 1959 there's an article about earthquake engineering and this gentleman is giving reference to his article in 1950. Now here I am in 2000 looking for an article 67 years back, published in Punjab Science Congress. Where do I look for? I look for all earthquake engineering libraries in the country. I can't find it. I look at all the national libraries, I can't find it. I look at Indian Railway libraries because the gentleman had retired from Indian Railways. Can't find it. The gentleman is no more. I reach out to his son and daughter. His daughter had a also retired from IIT campus, so I called her and I said, you know, I heard that you are daughter of such and such. She said, yes, of course. Do you remember your father did some work at Quetta? Yes, my dad was posted in Quetta in the young days. He wrote an article like that. I'm looking for that. She says, ah, after that night, we didn't keep the paper. Trust me, I was frustrated not being able to find an article that somebody in India wrote in Punjab Science Congress in 19th. I told numerous libraries. And one fine day, I happened to be visiting Thapar Institute at Patiala, whose director was my mentor, Professor M.P. Kapoor, and he took me around to the campus and he said, come to the library. Today. And we go to the library and a young man walks up to Professor Kapoor and says, good morning, sir. And Professor Kapoor introduces me to him. And I say, young man, tell me, uh, how are you? He said, sir, I'm good, good. If there's any help I can give you, please feel free to let me know. I said, fine. One fine day, I just think about that young man. I called Professor Kapoor and I said, Professor Kapoor, you remember there was a young librarian at Patiala? He said, yes, he's a dynamic guy. I gave this article. Can you challenge it? In 15 days' time, the article was over. Right? He was able to procure it from England and he spent some 40 50 dollars for courier charges. Professor Kapoor said, forget it, you know, Kapoor will pay for it. Yo, would I respect you if you are able to follow my friend? I'm telling you this story, unfortunately, I feel embarrassed that I don't know the name of that young man. Today he might be uh, a senior librarian somewhere in the country. Huh? 
Let's go. All right. <laughs> so the point I'm trying to make is, we as librarians or you as librarians have to start thinking. That are you able? Are you able to solve the problem that the academic is looking for, and that academic will remember and recall and cherish his association with you? And you don't have to be full librarian. You can be a deputy librarian or assistant librarian. Designation does not matter, as I've been saying often. In academics, the designation does not matter. The wisdom does not come because you are sitting in a higher place. The wisdom is wisdom. What I'm trying to say, my friends, is that we need to rethink the entire scope of library, the entire scope of uh, librarians. We as university administrators have to provide them resources. Of course, there's no doubt about that. Else the, the uh, libraries will die. But also it is incumbent on the librarians to see that the resources are well optimized. It is very easy for a vendor to walk into your office and say this is a great thing to subscribe and you know, money down the bill because nobody is using those things. So uh, I would say that there is a very, very important time in Indian academics where uh, we need to rethink about libraries and library science or information science. And I hope this conference will be useful in holding those deliberations. And I hope all of those who have come to attend this conference will find something useful to take back home and would uh, be able to do their job better than before. Thank you very much for being here. I it is my great pleasure to propose formal vote of thanks for Caliwas 2022. First of all, I would like to thank for the uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor, the BHU, Professor Sudhir Kumar Jain sir, for agreeing to host the Caliwas 2022 at BHU. And our Director, Honorable Director, J.P. Singh Yurel sir, for his constant guidance in organizing the convention. We are grateful to our Honorable Director IIT BHU, Professor Pramod Kumar Jain sir, for accepting our invitation as a chief guest. I say my deep, deep sense of gratitude to our keynote speakers, Mr. Prasad Pandey, Director of Library Services, Flinders University Australia, and all the invited speakers for accepting our invitation to put forth their ideas on the theme of the convention. We are also thankful to all the authors, research scholars who have contributed their research papers. We are really appreciated guidance and support from the, our conference director, Professor Dinesh Gupta, reporter, National International Advisory Committee, Paper Review Committee, editors, and all the invited experts and speakers for their constant support and guidance. We are indebted to the staff member of DHU and Infusion Center for their continuous support and we wholeheartedly appreciate active and passive support from the publisher who have given their visual support by funding our platinum sponsor are Balani Group, Single Nature, e Galactic, and Algeria. Our gold sponsors are Chemical Aspect Service, Globe Publication, Embrant Publishing, Keller and Francis, and Cambridge University Press, and all the silver and bronze sponsors. Last but not least, I would like to convey thanks to all the delegates who have come from different parts of the world for participating in this panel. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, may I now please request everyone to rise for the national anthem. Thank you. Jai 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 Jai